Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Mona's Takes. I am Mona Rose. Tonight, we're going to be making deer summer sausage. But before we get to that, if you will, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything we have coming up. <clears throat> For the summer sausage, we use two different brands. I have the Eastman Outdoor Sausage Kit that we use and we also use the Backwoods. Tonight we're going to be making all three. On our summer sausage, <clears throat> the ratio that we do on the summer sausage is 80% venison, 20% fat. I go down to my butcher and I say, hey, I need some beef fat. How much do you need? I tell him how much I need. He says, give me a few days. I go back and I pick it up and it's like 11 bucks for 20 pounds, something like that. Not much at all. <clears throat> so this is um, actually, we've already ground this course, the um, beef fat. We're going to grind the deer meat in a coarse <clears throat> um, setting and then we're going to mix all of it together. We're going to put all the seasonings together. And then you let that sit normally in the fridge for a couple of hours, and then we'll start putting it in the casing. After we grind it fine. After we grind it fine, yes. You need your scale. I've already pre-measured this out just to cut out a little time. But <clears throat> I have, I use the bowl, zero out my setting on it so that I get an accurate amount on my weight. So the first thing we're, oh, and zip ties. Gonna need zip ties. I'm too lazy to tie knots in spring. Yeah. So, we're gonna start by grinding the meat. And again, anytime I'm doing anything with your meat, I take towels and I just line the table with them because I like to just lay stuff down randomly. <laughs> okay, the first thing we're gonna do is put the attachment, the freezer attachment on to the column. This keeps your meat cold while you're working with it. I never can get it on there good. There we go. <clears throat> the colder the meat, the better it grinds and also you don't want your meat getting warm while you're dealing with it. Yeah, we start out with the Make sure that you have something long because this thing tends to spit out when it starts really going at it. You'll end up with it all over the floor. As I said before, if I get a deer, I like the steaks, so we pretty much make anything that will make a steak into a steak. And then everything else goes in the grind bag for breakfast sausage and summer sausage. This has been a good little unit. We've had it now for about three years. Get sometimes. Thankfully, I got a big hand and we'll go all the way down. All right. That is all of that. All right. Now we have to change the blades that go in it. Save as much of the meat as I can. 
because I don't like to waste it. It's so good. Alright, we're gonna put the small one on. The notch goes at the bottom. I have the notch at the bottom. I need to see the notch. It's right there. It's right there. Shut up. I'm going to have to get me a new assistant because this one's defective. Not working out well. up a little bit and then we're going to come back and mix it together all right the next step is we're going to mix the fat and with the deer meat Some of it's still frozen, but the colder you can get it, the better it is. And a lot of people put uh, cheddar cheese. We don't really care for cheese in ours, um, although we do normally make half and half um, with jalapenos because a lot of people, including my husband, like the jalapenos. I do not. So we normally make one batch of regular and then one batch of jalapeno. Now this is going to be the regular. There's more in the fridge for jalapeno if we want to do some more. And to make the jalapeno, really, at this stage, all I would do is literally uh, food processor up into almost a really, really fine dice. Um, two or three pounds of jalapenos, I mean, a lot of them almost you know in a big bowl almost like that fat then pour it in there mix it up and just carry on like normal okay and next we're going to mix our seasoning and we're doing three packages because we're doing about 15 pounds of sausage don't forget that other thing that came out that's the cure okay Ooh, that's strong nothing I think more than sodium nitrate I think pink salt but it's pink and pretty yep and it keeps the uh, meat from killing you oh, and then there's that Put two cups of cold water. And get it good mixed up. And what I forgot to mention a while ago was the casings. Um, they have to soak in water, warm water, so they get nice and soft. And pour it over the top. That smells good. I don't remember it smelling that good. It does smell good. And I'm going to mix this. Alright, so I use gloves when I'm doing the mixing because the meat is really cold. Like I said, you want your meat nice and cold <clears throat> to uh, do this throughout this process. So you want to keep it cold. And you just do it like you're kneading bread. Basically just like we did the uh, breakfast sausage. 
which I will put a link to somewhere up here. <laughs> And mixed in, incorporated into everything. And it looked like a lot of fat when we first put it in there, but you can see that um, even compared to the breakfast sausage yesterday, it's really not anywhere near as much once you start really mixing it in. Clean up a little bit and then we're going to put it through the grinder again. So swap some bowls around and be back in a minute. Okay, we're back. Everything's ground up, of course. The seasoning is mixed in. Now we are going to grind it fine. stuff for attachment attached. So pull this off. It's easier with two hands. Okay, pull the grinder plate out. Now we're going to clean this a little bit because we don't want a lot of big chunks in there. Now we're going to pull the cutter star off the grinder. That's going to go just like that because that has to turn. So then we'll put this on there just like that. I forgot we don't use these. I don't even know why they're there. <laughs> anyway, so since we're going to be doing some pretty big casings I'm using the largest funnel. Get this baby cranked in. See if it works. Looks good. So once we get the meat mixed up, we will begin stuffing. Alright, we're back. We've got it all ground very fine. We're going to give it one more good mixing. Make sure that everything is incorporated. Said before, it's just like kneading bread. Anything for stew a few times. It's all mixed up. cleaned up and then we're going to get set up and then we're going to stuff. All right guys we're back. We're getting ready to stuff the casings. This is definitely a two-person job. Um, Aaron's going to help me out here. We're going to start out with the bigger casings. The casings all depend on what brand of uh, seasoning and stuff you buy. The summer sausage kit comes with the long bags. The backwoods comes with the smaller bags. You're gonna put the bag on. 
all the way up. Get ready because we're going to start stuffing. I have a big sus uh, sausage stuffer in the back that would probably do this in about two or three go rounds, but it's bulky and I have to turn, actually turn, crank the handle to get it to go down while he's stuffing. So we decided to forego that and go with the good old Cabela's model. All right, here we go. You want to maintain a bit of tension on this. Once it starts moving, it's going to move pretty quick. You want to get it so it fills the casing. pretty good ring around the tube with my fingers so that the sausage meat doesn't sneak backwards out of the case. It will blow out the back if you don't. Yep. Ask us how we know. <laughs> many, many attempts. The only thing with using this instead of the big sausage stuffer is the tray won't hold enough to <clears throat> do a whole bag. So you have to keep reloading it. Alright, that should be good. Shut it off. Alright. And you can stuff them too much. If you run out of room up top to put the tie wrap on, you can stuff them too much. I like twisting that up really good to get it good and tight. Tie wrap around it. Oh man, you're using big tie wraps. What do you think this what kind of place do you think this is? We're it's broke. not like you don't have an affinity of them. Done. Sausage. We use <clears throat> um, the white tabs when we're doing just regular sausage and we use the green zip ties when we're doing jalapeno that way even though it's on the bag we know yep. if it's taken out of the bag and put in the fridge we know which type it is yep and that's the process for any casing we have some smaller ones that are clear I like these personally but what's really rather interesting is we'll show you at the end these and the red ones end up looking exactly the same after this is done and smoked. Once it's cured and smoked, they, they all look red. It's really impressive. So, we're not going to do the rest of this on camera because it's going to be another 30 minutes of this. So, once we get them all stuffed, we'll be back. We'll show you what we got. Alrighty. So, we didn't quite use all of our casings. But what you can do with that is kind of squeegee them all out and then what I do is I put them in a zip a really good ziplock bag with a whole pile of kosher salt just let them sit in there like that and they'll keep for I mean weeks and then you just again take them out throw them in the water and they're ready to go so we got four of the big ones four of the little ones the last one you can see there's a few air pockets in it because once the machine done spitting everything through you still got quite a bit of meat left in it so we usually scrape that last bit of meat out and go from there but that's what we've got now. Alright guys, so that's about it for tonight. We need to put this in the fridge tonight and let it set overnight and let it finish curing. And then in the morning we'll get up and we'll put it on the smoker. Um, and I'll let Aaron tell you the temps and stuff like that. But once it comes off the smoker, you let it cool down, bag it, and that's a wrap. Alright, see you in the morning. All right, so it's the next morning. The first thing we got to do, clean the smoker, because I use this to make a pork butt on New Year's, which isn't much. This is my Traeger. It's kind of a mid-sized model. I use it a lot. Um, so, just scrape off the pork butt remnants.
No smoke frogs. Out of here. aspects of this is getting in there a little vacuum cleaner and digging out some of the ashes that have built up in the cup. If you don't do that, you can end up with a fire. back together, plug it in, we're ready to smoke. Alright, typically for this, since sit in the fridge overnight maybe about 14 hours or so and now we're just going to take them outside and get them on the smoker and again we're going to be shooting for an internal temperature of 160 and then they're done you take them out you cool them off ready to freeze or eat all right so she's smoking pretty good he's on there much it. So now we're just going to let it go for as long as it takes to get to my 160 internal temperature. It'll be in good shape. I'm using some applewood type pellets uh, for this one. It's just what I had in there left over from the pork butt, but it'll be fine. You can use pretty much whatever kind of smoke you like. So, see you all in a few hours. All right, well it's about four and a half hours, almost five hours later. We're up to about 160. And everything is looking good. So, now it's time to take these out. And throw them on the ground. Like 
this finish cooling down. And now we got to let them cool off. And then they are ready to be eaten or frozen or whatever you want to do with them. So that's about it. That's how we make our venison summer sausage. And if you are looking for any of the stuff that we use to make all of this or the breakfast sausage the other day, I'll put a link to our Amazon affiliate below in the description. And uh, so as we go on, we'll have some more of this. Hope you all appreciate the video. If you do, please give us a thumbs up. And uh, Mona's going to be putting together some more stuff for her reality shows. We've got a few more of these coming, so please subscribe if you haven't. And click the little old bell there so you can get notified whenever we do put some new content out. Appreciate y'all for hanging out with us. Hope you're all having a good day. Take care.